Ooh, we're finally there. Well, not quite, but we're getting there. So this is the old world, right? And I'm almost done with the hostile mobs. So this is the last sort of row of abilities to go through. So every set of two is one. So there's like one down there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight mobs left for me to do. And then I am done with all the mob abilities. Well, all the normal mob abilities. Then we just have bosses and some other stuff to do for the pack. And then, ah, the pack should be good to go. <laughs> should be. Unless I think of more stuff to add, but I think what we'll do today is I will finish this off I will port all of these over to a data pack, right? Then we'll look at some hostile mobs some of their abilities I'll probably go over the system one more time just to explain how exactly I am getting it to work And then we'll probably do a little roadmap of of the features that well oh, damn it boss <laughs> Speaking of which, bosses are uh, the, probably the last feature I will need to do but yeah, we'll do a roadmap of the features I'm wondering where he spawned to. And then, right, we should be, we should have a decent estimate of when the pack will actually be done. So, let me get to work and then we'll go through some fun mob abilities. And just like that, a day or so later, yeah, took me a lot longer. I thought it would, uh, we're done, right? So basically this whole middle section is finito. I've copied over all the abilities. Wow, sort of. I decided to skip the Ender Dragon and the Wither and the reason for that is thinking about it, right? We've already got the base versions. They already have abilities. So what I might do is add a hard mode variant, right? With abilities, similar to how I've granted the other mobs where, oh, I lost my way. But yeah, so we're kind of done. Well, with this tower, we still have everything over here to do, right? Daily events, uh, some difficulty, some misc items, some potions. There's still a lot, right? That I'd like to convert over. I'll probably skip it for now just work on the major features and then leave the, the minor features for down the road. But yeah, we can hop over to the main world and essentially proof check it all, just to make sure that it all is all functional. No idea why I said it like that. And here we are, right? So the main testing world, which has a huge amount of lightning. I don't know why, right? You'll hear it all throughout this episode and probably anything else I do. Just lightning goes off everywhere in this world. And it's really confusing. But yeah, so basically all we have to do is type in function, Rune chance, uh, mob, then abilities, but we want hostile. And we have to go through and count and make sure that they're all here. So for instance, blaze has four abilities. That's great, that's fantastic, that's what we want. Right, creeper has four, drowned is four, right? Elder Guardian, four, so good so far. Endermite, there we go, there's the first missing ability. So I have to go through my documents, find out which ability it is, so not duplicate, fester, or swarm, and then figure out what's wrong with it. I have to do that for all of them, so I'll probably Take a sec to write them all down, go through the list here and make sure uh, I can sort of just easily note which ones I have to look up before I go do all the, the sifting through folders. Surprisingly, not too bad, right? In fact, strangely enough, all the ones that have typos in them are either to do with the TP command or the tagging command, right? So uh, how many, how many is here? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 for me to correct. And then we can start going through them all, right? Cause I can just activate them myself, right? So for instance, if we were to go to, I don't know, Elder Guardian, stay away, right? This is gonna act as though we're the Elder Guardian. So as you can see, it does a whole bunch of strikes around us and says, stay away. The Elder Guardian lashes out at everyone nearby. So if you can imagine, right, I'm an Elder Guardian, someone's near me and then all of a sudden they see a bunch of that and they take some damage. All right, so fairly simple, but yeah, we'll, we'll go through a few, see what they're like, right? And what my creativity is like. And then we'll probably talk about what's left to do for the pack. And hopefully try to figure out somewhat a time frame to actually get done to where we can all start playing. Right, it's looking good. I'm pretty sure they're all there now. So the question is, what ones do we want to look at, right? Uh, I do want to look at Vex. Yes, okay, so that works, that's good. All right? You can see the TNT, so I might have to reduce the tick. All right, so you don't see the TNT. It's meant to be, obviously, like a, well, it says there, explosive soul to the Vex. Uh, the Vex releases a burst of energy from its soul. Now, as you can see, it's not strong in block, so it's not actually real TNT. In fact, I don't know why I'm even summoning the TNT then, if it's not real TNT. Thinking about it, <laughs> I don't, I don't actually need to summon the TNT. I can just play the particles. <laughs> Uh, give me a sec. Yeah, there we go. Just cut out the middleman, and this should be doing damage if I grab out some pigs, right? We'll use some pigs as guinea pigs. Rightly so. Spawn them around us. We proc it again. Yeah, it does a little bit of damage. Two hits is enough. 
All right, so every now and then the, the, sh the Vex can detonate. Curious if I should make it self-destruct. Yeah, I will leave it be as is. But yeah, we have, well, a plethora of abilities really to go through. There's four per hostile mob. And how many hostile mobs are there? Sorry, I'm just checking my notes. There is a whopping 33. So there is a total of voice at 132 abilities here that I have added to the game across all the hostile mobs. Already done for the passives, already done for the for the neutral. So, you know, that is pretty extensive already. I mean, probably that and the, the seasons might be, you know, just enough to really, you know, have this be a, a fun pack as is, right? Seasons in different biomes and then all the all the different mob abilities. But anyway, there's still a lot more that I would like to do. We'll look at, ah, oh, that was the wrong one. I was meant to do weather clear. We'll look at a few more mob abilities. Again, acting as though we are the mob. And that's the other cool thing, right? You know, I could easily just give the player the ability to activate any of these abilities. Right, if I just give them an item that runs any of these functions, because it designates whether it's running them as the as the entity, right? We can have a a player, you know, use soul tether. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that did what it's meant to do to an exuberant amount. <laughs> So, as it implies, it tethers everything to one spot. But that was a lot of entities being pulled from who knows where. Uh, let's just let's just do this, why don't we? Type equals I don't want me. So everyone but me. Right, bye bye. Your items too, please. And I have no idea why it exploded either. I guess I saw some of the Endermen used behind you. So they teleported over. But yeah, okay. That is why we, we test things out. Uh, okay, let me try to see what happened there and fix it. Always the TP command. So I had not set a cap on the distance that it pulls entities from, right? So it's meant to just be, if you're near that little tether point, right, you get stuck to it. So uh, i.e. distance equals like one, maybe. But I hadn't set that, so it just pulled every single loaded entity at the moment to that one spot. So why don't we try it again? We'll use tether, should summon under us, right? You can see the little spot. And if we stand here, we get stuck to it and we can't move out from it. We might have to condense the particles a little bit more because you can't quite see them. I'd like them to be more of a little spot, right? So if you stand anywhere in this little particle area, you can't move out of it until it's done, which I think it's about five seconds, I think, right? So it takes two seconds to activate. So right now I can move out of it and then it lasts for five seconds and you're tethered in the spot basically. I don't know, I just thought it was a, a cool mechanic that I'll probably use for bosses in all honesty. Speaking of which, let's let's move on to the next sort of part. Uh, let me designate somewhere for us to build, right? Because I don't want to be in a season. I want to be somewhere up here where there's no biome, right? Because the seasons, while fun, are a little annoying. Granted, uh, for instance here, if we just undercover, right? So you can see the little icon. We just hide indoors, technically, right? Uh, no particles, no effects. But then we go out particle start yeah so build shelter in certain biomes but let me let me just build off of here i guess and we will set up a little board right where we can write down everything that i need to do that's left for the pack right before we're ready to release and have some fun actual play testing it right and then you guys can help me out with that too hopefully and tell me what you like tell me what you don't like tell me what needs fixing what needs editing i think that should be enough space for us to work with let me set a few stuff up and then we'll go through it Right, not too shabby. A little notice board, if you will. So we've devised it into four sections. And there are, what, 15, 18 different tasks for me to complete. And then the pack is in a state where I am happy to release it, right? And we're happy to, to start playing. And if I think of anything, right, that's the beauty of it. It's my pack. So if I think of anything, we can just go ahead and do it straight away. Uh, we, what we want to do, which is kind of annoying, I need to shift. Oh, there we go. Okay, so starting off, we have our major features, right? So we'll do major features. So there's five of them for me to complete. Then we have shift. Oh, it's very annoying because of the space. Uh, then we have minor features to do. Oh, got to enter as well. Minor features. Then we have, uh, what do I name this? In progress. There we go. So things I've started in the pack, but haven't finished, obviously. Hence why they're in progress. Self-explanatory. And that needs to be in two lines, apparently, because progress is too long. Okay, so in progress. 
And then lastly down here, we will call these extras, right? So things that I would like to add, but are very low priority, if you will. Okay, so starting off for the major features that are still left to do, right? The, uh, which order do I want to tackle them in? Because I saw I fill them in in the right order. We will do custom beacons first. Now, what do I mean by custom beacons? Essentially what I want is things or trophies that the player can get from mobs or create that they can set up in their base and act as essentially beacons, but not obviously beacons in the traditional sense. You just I don't know, stick it in an item frame or something and it's, it sets up, you know, a buff or protective. Uh, the one that came to mind was like for phantoms. So in a X radius, any phantoms come in, they'll be pushed or back, right? So phantoms can't actually get to you depending on, you know, if you have X, Beacon, custom beacon. So I think custom beacon is probably the easiest way to explain it. Then we have uh, dynamic difficulty. So dynamic, good, difficulty. That's well, right? Hopefully. And essentially, this is just a progressive difficulty system outside of that of obviously the normal one. So was it normal, hard, easy, peaceful? So for instance, if you say in one biome or one spot, the difficulty will ramp up. If you stay alive for too long, difficulty will ramp up. If you have X items and equipment, the difficulty will ramp up. And basically just the state of the world will progress with you, which should be quite fun. And then they'll also rope in some of the other things. For instance, the way to actually get the custom hearts, right? That are used for the affinity system, the special weapons and magic. Then after that, we have, of course, bosses. So I do have 16 prepared, so to speak, that are all done in the other world, right? So I just need to port them over, but then I do also want to uh, flesh out their designs, if you will. I don't know if this is still set up, no. Uh, I, give me a sec, I I think I need to look it up. But essentially for Piglin Brutes, that's the example I have. I have a whole s uh, set of armor designed, right? So you can stick that on a Piglin Brute, and then they'll look more like a boss Piglin Brute than just a normal Piglin Brute. So for instance, we have a normal Piglin Brute, right? And then we have the Piglin King Brute, right? With his nice fancy Piglin belt, uh, his little tusk helmet. I don't know, it looks, looks kind of cool, right? With the faceplate. Cool. Uh, they still use their abilities. Yes, because that is not controlled by no AI. That's something I should actually add in, right? So if they have no AI, they don't use abilities. But yeah, so this is what I want to set up for all the boss mobs you know, custom armor that makes them look like bosses. I don't want to add in uh, custom, you know, entities or anything like that. I don't want to go too extreme with uh, the data pack, right? Resource pack, I should say, right? I still want it to feel, you know, in between Minecraft and modded Minecraft, if you will. But yeah, so bosses, uh, then we have village activities. So I want the villages to be a bit more dynamic and actually work. So for instance, you know, the blacksmith goes to his workstation, but actually craft something that could be actually fun. Right, so activities, I think that's spelled correctly. It looks a bit funny to me. And then lastly, the big one, which might or might not be done by release is dungeons. In fact, that should have a S on it, right? So I do have the dungeon system in mind. It's a lot easier than what we set up in the previous world uh, with with functions, right? And the, what is it? Is it place, right? Yeah, so place structure. We can use that to create little dungeon rooms that are easier to place. And altogether, conceptually, it's done. Again, a lot of these are done on the main world, the, the data block world, command block world, I should say, right? Just need to be ported over. So they are the five major features to do. Then in terms of the minor features, we have the shulk exchange, what does that let me... Oh, that's cool. Oh, if it's blank, you can right click. Or can you just... Oh, you can always right click. I'm trying to shift. Okay, the more you know. So we have the shulk exchange, right? Essentially a way to convert shulk blocks into other blocks because I think that's a good system. You know, it requires experience to make shulk blocks. And then if you have, say, a stack of shulk blocks, you can convert it into X item. I think it's decent enough, right? Again, it's already been done. I just need to, to port it over to actually be a function. Then we have cauldron brewing. Uh, is it A first? I think it's A first. It's a cauldron brewing. Pretty self-explanatory. You chuck stuff in a cauldron. It brews the potion effect. Gives you the potion effect straight away, right? As an entry level version, rather than going to the nether, getting a brewing stand and making potions. The, obviously the downside being that the potion effects are centered on the cauldron. So for instance, if I, th if I uh, chuck a whole bunch of, I don't have any. Wait, I have a creative inventory, right? If we chuck a whole bunch of plants in here, They'll get brewed together into a potion effect, apply it to us, or apply it to everyone in a certain radius around the cauldron. And yeah, so entry level brewing, if you will. Then we have, uh, what's next? Decorated pot breaking. 
decorated pots breaking. Okay, so you go get your shards, you make your decorated pots, then you have like an iron goal and smash them, and you get items, right? Big old Zelda mechanic. That's probably the, the biggest known for breaking vases. Then we have fish ponds. So you collect fish, you stick them in a little pool of water with some coral. Depending on the coral and the fish, they will actually do different things. They'll generate stuff, they'll generate effects. I don't know, we'll think about more once we get to it. And then spore blossoms. Basically, the ordering as well is the order in which they've been thought out, right? So that's done, that's done, that's halfway done. They're still in the thinking phase. Same with everything up here, right? I know what I wanna do, I know what I wanna do, know what I wanna do, kinda know what I wanna do. It's there, but it's probably the hardest to convert over. But yeah, so those are the five minor features to do. And then the in progress, so the stuff that I've started, but I need to finish. We have the magic systems. That really needs to be finished off. I, <laughs> I did one third of it, and then I sort of just stopped to move on, because I do get bored, I'm very frantic. So I want to keep things fresh and work on different things all at once. Then we also have blast furnace smelting. Furnace smelting. So essentially the multi-block here, you can craft a few custom things off of it, but if you chuck ore and say coal into it, it will uh, smelt uh, ingredients at a higher degree, a higher standard than just chucking them in a normal smelter. And it'll be you know quicker, right? So you can set up you know dispensers or something. The diagonal's probably an issue. Although if you put a dispenser here on top of the wall, I think it would go through, or even on top. I don't know, I'll play around with it. I'll probably tweak it a bit so it is feasible to you know run like water past it or dispensers, that way you can automate it. Then we have dragon egg conversion. So using the dragon egg as an altar, you can create all different mob eggs. Pretty self-explanatory. We'll just use the custom items that we've done for the project. So all of these. So for instance, dried flesh comes from a husk. Use this, something else, and a dragon egg, and you get a husk mob egg so that you can tweak spawners. Then we have bonus counts. One, two, three. Ah, custom enchants. Custom enchants. Uh, yeah, so be decided. If I just go with what I've previously made or redo it, probably redo it, but keep the way it works. So just be law tags on weapons, right? You have X amount of slots, you apply them, and then you gain bonuses. Then lastly, we have miscellaneous items, which is pretty open-ended, but is essentially anything I think, think up that doesn't really group with anything else. It's just, you know, a cool item. So for instance, when I was thinking, uh, we have the mob abilities for horses and donkeys. So for instance, if I were to go function, Rune chants, uh, they are passive. All right, so we go pass, oh, I've got the A. Passive, and then we look for donkey with giddy up, All right? So this would normally give the donkey speed and resistance. So if you had an item that made you proc it instantly, so the donkey uses giddy up, they get speed, so a little speed boost, right, while you're on a mount, could be cool. Then the extras, so we have block effects, which is basically if you're on X block, it will give you X effects, right? That way you can use certain blocks better than others to, you know, pave areas, do pathways, something like that, they give speed. Yeah. And then we have chaotic enchantments, which is a way to get higher enchantments, but it is significantly more random than the normal enchanting system. And I did mis misspell it, chaotic, right? Enchants, done. And then lastly, we have daily events, which is the big one, because Balancing them is somewhat of a nightmare, but the proccing and all that should be fine, right? Every time at X time, right? Uh, probably whatever the time is set to right after you sleep, uh, events can proc and will do different things, sort of thing like Terraria. But yeah, 18, 18 things to do. Now, speaking of which, uh, this is progressed. This is progressed. That is, no, I actually haven't started that. Haven't started, haven't started. Any of these have I started? No. No, technically, because they just use the normal abilities and I've already started some of the armors, but basically it's yellow, it's in progress, uh, which is funny because these are obviously in progress, but I haven't really done it. <laughs> well, to some degree, I've done the other half, I've done the mob spawners, and for these I've done, well, the weapons, and these I've done a bunch of random items. Anyway, I should probably change that. But yeah, yellow in progress, green obviously will be complete, and red has not started. So I can use this now to finally give proper updates as we do these videos. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Why don't we do one more mob ability just to end it off. Uh, what, what sounds like a fun one? We have Combust, Heatwave, Night, No, not Drown, not Elder Guardian. Well, the Poison Barb's kind of cool, except they don't work. Hmm. Such a simple thing. Yeah, there we go. 
They don't really face the right way, but they kind of look like barbs. We'll pick another one. Uh, but yeah, so snowballs, you have to set the count, which is I didn't do, right? If you want to make them look like different items. Uh, do, 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 what's, what looks interesting? Nothing really, right? Because they would they would look a lot better if the actual mob used it, right? Uh, what about snare whip? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Pillagers can now randomly shoot out webs so you get stuck in. Probably works a bit better, right? Because they'll be on the ground. They won't actually go super far. Yeah, fun. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. See ya.